Okay, so if there are two ThinkPads that people talk about most in my comments section, uh, it's the X200 and the X220. Now, I've always had this X200, but I recently got this X220, so I want to do a little video comparing them, because there are very subtle differences, differences that can make a big difference uh, in performance and the actual, like, how the ThinkPad actually works and functions. Okay, so let's put it this way. Now, uh, these computers are at the cusp of ThinkPad goodness. Now, as we all know, um, it's better to have modern machines. I mean, they have, you know, more recent hardware and stuff like that. But the thing with ThinkPads is that ThinkPad designs have been getting worse. That is, I mean, they're, think they're still good. Modern ThinkPads are still decent computers. Um, but they're not, they don't have the same build quality that they used to. They don't have the same uh, keyboards and stuff like that. Um, so both of these computers are notable because they are right at the point where um, you know the traditional goodness of ThinkPads is preserved, but they also have modern machinery and modern hardware. Um, so they're right at the, the sort of sweet spot. So a lot of people have these machines, they're very common. Now, the biggest difference between these two, uh, which actually might not even be the biggest difference, uh, but you know, one of the big uh, you know, psychological differences um, for use is that this X200 has an Intel Core 2 Duo processor, and the X220 it, uh, comes, I think, with an i5, but you can also put i7s on it and stuff like this. So this can use much more modern processors, uh, while this one cannot. It has old processors. Now, that, of course, if you, if you are interested in privacy and freedom, that's not necessarily something good. So these processors might be better. Uh, but these are compatible with Libreboot, uh, meaning that you can get rid of the Intel Management Engine. So, of course, the Intel Management Engine, for those of you who don't know, uh, comes on basically all modern Intel computers, or, I mean, uh, computers with Intel processors, and it's a little extra processor in here that has network access, it can look at what you're doing, it can look at your screen, uh, it can send messages back home, all these kind of terrible things. Um, but you can get rid of it on the X200 very easily by installing Libreboot or something. Now, uh, that, that is one advantage of the X200, and it's one of the reasons I have this machine. It's a great machine. Uh, I use it, you know, this is, I feel safe on this machine. Now, this I got recently because there's going to be a Libreboot exploit coming for it, allegedly. Um, they're working on it right now. It's supposed to be done by the end of the year. Hopefully, it's successful, and if so, I think I'm going to... Uh, move to this machine. Now, this not to say that the X200 is even that worse. Again, the difference between the processors, I'll just say in general, I think is sort of a meme. Uh, you know, for most of your daily computing usage, uh, unless you are compiling programs or rendering uh, videos, the Intel Core 2 Duo is going to work totally fine. Totally fine at web browsing, totally fine, even at the more intensive stuff. Okay, uh, so I have an SSD in here, it runs fine. Actually, I actually have solid state drives in both of these computers, uh, but they, they run fine. There's nothing wrong with this computer. This is perfect. This is a great computer. I love it. Uh, so don't, don't you know, get it twisted about, oh, it has a processor that's a little old. Okay, so there are also different performance differences. Then we'll talk about sort of the, the superficial things about them. Um, so this can take more RAM. Uh, it can take up to 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, that is more. Uh, but 16, uh, at that point of ramage, you sort of have diminishing returns. So that might not be as much as you want. I actually have 8 gigs of RAM on both of these. They both work fine. Uh, and I think 8 gigs is sort of the upper bound. In fact, really, I think like 4 gigs of RAM is enough for, you know, just a normal computer. Uh, more than that is so you might be wasting your money. I don't know. Uh, but I don't feel like there, there's been any difference uh, between 4 and 8. Uh, and I don't think there's going to be difference between 8 and 16, but whatever. Um, so that's another performance difference. Uh, but let's let's go ahead and look at how they physically look different. Uh, so one of the big differences is the X200 is one of the last computers to not have a trackpad. Uh, now I actually like that because I never use these trackpads. I only use the track points. Uh, but over here on the X200 we actually do have a trackpad. Uh, I've actually disabled it because I literally never use it and sometimes I accidentally move it around when I'm doing something else and I don't like it. Uh, but if you like it, it is here. It doesn't take up any more room. You can actually compare the sizes. Uh, the keyboards are of equal size. Uh, the machines are about the same size. Uh, so this is doesn't take up any extra room. So if you want to have it, it's no big problem. Um, you'll notice there are some superficial differences to so the buttons here. 
you know, these are the old ThinkPad buttons. Uh, this has the more modern ones. It doesn't make any difference. Although this one also does have a microphone mute uh, button, which might be, you know, it's, I guess, nice to have. Uh, otherwise, the keyboards are pretty identical. You know, they have the same function keys. They have, you know, pretty much all the same stuff. This one has a slightly larger escape button. You know, that's just, you know, because or something like that. Um, but generally, the keyboards are very identical. Uh, both of them, of course, are, you know, the classic ThinkPad uh, keyboards that everyone knows and loves. This is why people love these machines, because you can type on these all day and your fingers will just not get tired. They're not like these chiclet keyboards, which are literally just like you hitting wood all day. Um, so these are very nice. They're very tactile. Um, so you can get a lot of work done on them. Um, so there are other little differences. Uh, let me... Uh, so, for example, um, you know, this re uh, monitor or is actually a slightly bigger resolution. It's actually a weird resolution. It's something like uh, 1366 by 7 something or other. A really weird, but it is, it is bigger than this one, uh, slightly. You might not even be able to see the difference here, uh, but it is slightly bigger. Um, now, both can take webcams. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. So both have a webcam slot. I don't have a webcam on this one. I do have one on that one. I installed it in one of my videos a couple times ago. Um, so that is a difference. And also the lids are a little different. So in this one, uh, you really just have a lid that goes down and sort of keeps itself down with, uh, I'm not exactly sure the mechanism, but importantly, there's no latch on this. You just sort of pull, pull it up and that's it. Ugh. It's sort of hard to do with one hand. Anyway, so it is stable. If it is, if it's difficult to do with one hand, it's gotta be a stable lid. Uh, but this is the same way, uh, except for you have a latch here, and you can hear it click, and of course you have to undo it to pull it back up. Uh, actually, less resistance on this, but that's why I have the latch. Um, so that's another uh, little difference. Uh, but in general, these computers are basically the same, and a lot of people sort of you know fret about the difference. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and say, both of them are totally fine computers. Uh, you can get either one. Both of them actually go for around the same price. Um, they're, this one, well, I'll say this one's usually a little less than 100. This one sometimes is a little more than 100, but they're not a big difference. Uh, if you're concerned about privacy in computing, I recommend you go with the X200, unless you're like me and you also want to bet on Libreboot being able to uh, exploit this device and finally get a free BIOS on this thing. Of course, well, I will say, you can get Core Boot on this. Uh, you can get Core Boot and you can clean parts of the, uh, the management engine, but not all of it. I'll just say that. So you can partially get rid of some of the ma Intel management engine, so you have less of this, you know, basically spyware on your computer um, but it you know not totally and if Libreboot is successful I will say uh, if, you know in Libreboot this device I will say this will be the preferred computer I'm always gonna keep this X200 it's a great machine um, and if you want a, a stable machine and you don't have to do that much compiling this is gonna be totally fine uh, it'll be a little cheaper and it's a great model um, so anyway that that's about it um, so, again, these are two of the most talked about ThinkPads in my comments section. People always ask about them. Uh, they're both fantastic computers. It just depends on what, what's your priority. Do you prioritize having a modern processor? Or do you want to have, uh, or, you know, you also get the trackpad if you want it. Or do you like, you know, the, the classic trackpad list uh, ThinkPad, which can be easy, uh, easily Libre booted. Uh, where you can, of course, buy these Libre booted on eBay for a little more. So anyway, that's about it. Um, hopefully this communicates whatever information you needed about these computers. Uh, but yeah, so see you next time.